Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, California Weather Watch. Today is November 11th, and right now we're looking at the infrared satellite imagery. You got the state of California, you got the Bay Area right there, there's Sacramento. You can see the strong frontal system driving down across the state as we speak, some cold air behind it. We've got some wind action, we've got big waves coming here over the next week or so. We got some mountain snow, so we'll dive into all this detail here as we go through the video this morning. Look at the frontal system right now. Look at some of these very heavy rainfall segments just now moving into the Bay Area as we speak, moving towards Sacramento, and this moved all the way across Northwest California, across some of the Sacramento Valley, is now pushing into the foothills here. Can't rule out a lightning strike or two with this activity, as well as in the cold air cumulus, you can see it behind this unstable air mass that'll be moving into the area as we go through the day today also. Now, taking a look at what the Doppler radar should look like here over the next 60 hours or so, let's go ahead and go to where we are right about now. And you can see this frontal system probably even underdoing a little bit here of what some of the segments I was seeing on the Doppler radar there were pretty intense. And as we put this into motion and go through this afternoon and evening, you can kind of see it losing its point as it gets toward, uh, punch as it gets towards point conception here, for example. It does ring out some precipitation here across the transverse range, though. And of course, that will bring some mountains snows some showery air behind that but then we turn our attention to an additional frontal system as we go through Wednesday morning that should be impacting portions of Northwest California. We'll scroll through the day on, on Wednesday and you can see that moving down towards the Bay Area by the time you get towards the evening hours there. So yeah, we have some active weather incoming here and also I want to talk about the big waves are kind of coinciding with the king tides here. So we're going to look over that in some detail. That is going to be between November 15th through 17th, but also on a couple days on each side of that from really from the 13th to about the 19th or even the 20th, the, way, the tides are going to be enhanced uh, because of the king tides there. It's where the sun and the moon are pulling on that tidal bulge there at the same time. They're kind of lining up here for the west coast of North America. So we've got these hazard beach conditions. In the meantime, check out some of these large breaking waves. Uh, this goes for the Oregon coast all the way down into California. we got high surf advisories well down into the Bay Area also. And you can see that reflected here, Oregon coast, all the way down the California coastline. That purple means the high surf advisories are in effect. You can see this extend all the way down towards Big Sur and Gorda and even a bit further south. Some big breaking waves. Do not turn your, beach, your back on the ocean or the beaches. And uh, taking a look, this goes all the way on into 6 a.m. Wednesday. And there's probably more wave action coming after that also. So here's Sacramento. You can see the winter weather advisory for some of the Sierra Nevada. And if we take a look at the snow levels here, Generally, the biggest amounts are going to fall 6,500 feet and higher, two to eight inches. So watch out for some of the higher passes and some of the backcountry wind gusting 45 miles per hour. This goes all the way on in through midnight tonight, and we're going to have to we're going to have more of this coming here with that secondary frontal system as we go through the day Wednesday. Also, and even talks about a slower, potentially stronger system is expected mid to late week. This also gives me a good reminder here. You know, think twice if you before you um, support anything that would cause the slashing of the National Weather Service. It's already an extremely underfunded program here for you know the federal government, and it's very good. We have some very good people that work for the National Weather Service. They're extremely knowledgeable. They know these individual areas across the country very well. So. Um, it, it's a very valuable resource is what I'm just trying to say without getting too political or anything like that. And I don't take sides on politics on this channel. You guys know, but the National Weather Service has some extreme value. Now, take a look at Reno National Weather Service here. They are talking about the same thing, 6,500 feet, two to six inches above that. And you can see that would include some of the Truckee area here and Interstate 80. So watch out if you're going back and forth there. Try to time your trip up here. You just might want to wait here until maybe tomorrow on Tuesday before the plows can get through there and get the slick spots on if you can avoid it. And looking across at Los Angeles, California, we do have some of that high surf advisories all the way down towards Lompoc here or San Luis Obispo. So some of the coastal areas these waves are going to get pretty big here over the next week and if we look at the wind advisory that does include places like Santa Barbara and Oxnard we'll take a look at that and this northwest winds gusting to 45 miles per hour and again that's out of the northwest this goes all the way on through 6 a.m. Tuesday 
Now, taking a look at some of those winds, this is that frontal system. You can see the gusty winds in advance of that kind of moving down. Then it turns northwesterly, and that's what's going to drive that wind advisory here across some of Southern California. But you can also see that across the Southern Sierra Nevada to Hatchapi, the higher terrain, peninsular range, and these gusty westerly winds rolling across the desert. It becomes more northerly here across portions of Nevada. And then watch the next frontal system as we go through Tuesday night. You can clearly see it. Some big winds coming for the Oregon coast, for Northern California, especially some of the headlands. going to get really good gusty out of the south as we go through the day Wednesday. You can see some gusty winds even all the way down towards the Bay Area. Look at these strong southwest winds moving across the higher terrain as we go through Wednesday also. Now, wave action. So check this out. This is why the high surf advisories are going to be up. You can see this wave action just really propagating down much of the state. And we've got additional rounds of this as we go on in towards the 15th. And that's when these king tides really start getting big. So we got the enhancement of the waves on top of these king tides. Could cause some beach erosion could make for some very interesting wave viewing along some of the coastal areas. And then if we scroll off way off into the extended forecast, maybe another system keeping those waves elevated as we go through the 19th. The king tides will still be a little bit elevated at that time frame as well. So lots to watch here over the next week or so. Looking at 500 millibar heights, this is our frontal system right now. This is at 18,000 feet, upper levels of the atmosphere. There goes the potentially stronger frontal system here, and you can kind of see how this trough hangs out. Slower, less progressive system, as mentioned by the National Weather Service, that hangs out for a bit. And, and a bit of a chilly air mass with this also could bring some snow for the higher terrain of Southern California also. And then after that, we're not going to worry too much about that just yet. we got so much on our plate. But I will show you something else with the extent of forecast here coming up. And actually, it starts with this graphic. So there's our frontal system today. There's the one, potentially stronger one, as we go uh, upcoming. And you can see that's going to be prolonged precipitation amounts. Could bring some down, again, across Southern California. Not looking at huge amounts, but nonetheless, there is that potential. Then we got another system in the Pacific Northwest. And in the wake of that one, look at this high-pressure build over the interior and the Great Basin. That could start to potentially drive some additional offshore winds through the extent of forecast. This wouldn't happen until um, we're looking at probably the early portion of the following week. So we're still looking a week out right now, but that's been showing up a bit in some of the models. And I'll show you more on that here with this. We're looking at winds at about 2,500 feet up in the atmosphere. I'm going to scroll through here and we'll take a look at what is to come. So as we go, you can see the winds kind of turn northerly here and then they start to turn offshore as we go on into the early portion and mid portion of next week as that high pressure kind of sets up over the interior areas. We still don't know how strong this event is going to be, but you know, it's still November and when you get the offshore winds, you can always have fire danger across much of the state of California. So we'll be watching that one closely. And I did freeze the mean sea level pressure here. Where you can clearly see over the Great Basin, Nevada, Utah, uh, Idaho, the mean sea level pressure will be high, and you'll have that offshore gradient flowing there as we go on into the following week. Uh, total precipitation in inches. I'm going to scroll through this here pretty quickly. There's that secondary frontal system, and then there's a trough drops down across the region. We're not looking at huge amounts across the Southern California, but you can see Northwest California. I got some big rainfall that's going to be continuing here, and we've got excessive rainfall outlooks also. So stay tuned to any local forecast for flooding in your individual areas. There's so many valleys and so many different terrain features here that I cannot cover everything. This channel, I want to drive home that point, is more of a broad brush on systems that are coming in. So if you have individual locations that you need to be extremely concerned about, it's important that you pay attention to the National Weather Service and your point and click forecast and kind of update yourself those National Weather Service forecasts come out every six hours. But I will kind of give you a heads up on, you know, like I'm doing now, that this flooding could be coming in, especially as you go through the day Wednesday. This frontal system is going to be packing a punch. Then we're going to have this trough setting up and continue some precipitation and then maybe another system as we go through the weekend. Uh, total snow in inches. It is already starting to fly across some of the higher terrain in Northern California, but on the day to day, this will be piling up across, again, some of the higher terrain of the Sierra Nevada. And then watch as we go on in towards Wednesday, you'll see that second shot of some snowfall there. And then that chilly air mass moves down across the area. So, you know, at least for a time, we're going to build up some of that snow across the higher terrain. It's still November. It's mid-November. This can easily get wiped out by some warmer conditions and whatnot, but it is nice to see. And, it, you know, when you drop snowfall on the ground, it generally absorbs into the ground better than rainfall does. If you're dumping a bunch of rain, of course, you're going to get a lot more runoff. But if you dump a bunch of snow, it piles up and then it can melt off a bit slower and it can soak into the ground a bit better.
Now, taking a look at 6 to 10 day temperature outlook, this goes through November 20th, below normal here, clear signal on the west coast. Broad brush, lower 48, above average, 8 to 14 days, still showing that below average signals. We go through November 24th and 8 to 14 day here. Kind of, you know, I'll keep you a better update on that, but I, I do like to show these Climate Prediction Center uh, uh, forecasts. Now, taking a look, we're over 28,500. Thanks to everybody who's been along for the ride so far. We started off, what did we start off the year at here? Or right, this is October 14th. Let me go back and let's do... Uh, 2024. Let's see what we started the year at here. We started the year at about what 15,000. So yeah, we're not doing bad. Channel's doing good. Um, yeah, weather's no doubt is it's picking up now, and we're gonna continue to have these active periods as we go through the fall, the winter, and the spring months as we always do. So hopefully you guys enjoying the channel. Click like and subscribe. We'll do this all again tomorrow, and I will talk to you guys then.